Hello everybody, this is David with another video. Um, I just finished doing Pong Part 2 and uh, I was messing with the NES controller. I got it hooked up so I'm going to just go ahead and implement the NES controller to do Pong Part 3 for those of you who are interested in getting an NES controller and we're operating games using it with the Basis 3. So here's the uh, diagram from before and essentially instead of the buttons driving the signals into the state machine in the graphics generation, um, the NES controller. Now this, this Verilog file I got from embeddedthoughts.com. I'll leave the link in the description. Um, I went to that website before. Uh, I think it was during the Frogger Part 2 video um, with the Python file converting into ROM and stuff. but. Yeah, I just grabbed his NES controller, and uh, I'll show you my setup with the controller, but and I'll show you the code, how I plug it in. Okay, here I'm in Vivado. This is the same code from Pong Part 2. I just added the NES controller module. You can see the interface here. I'm not going to go through all the logic. You can study it and check it out for yourself, but I'm just concerned with the interface right here and instantiating in the top. So from Pong Part 2, I was using the buttons, so and, and now I'm using the NES controller. So I have um, three pieces of information. I'll show you in the constraints file where it's connected into the PMOD. But we have data latch NES clock on PMOD JA. And, I, and, and instead of having to go through and change all the, where it says button, I just create a wire called button and I'll plug these in in the instantiation for the NES controller right here. Button zero is up, uh, button one is down. Here's clock reset, data latch, and NES clock. And then in the constraints file, I took out button D and button U. I still have button R for the reset. And then here's instantiating the, uh, or in the constraints file, I don't know if you call it instantiating in here, but so where I hook up PMOD J. So this is pin 1, pin 2, and pin 3, or 0, 1, 2, from uh, right to left on JA on the top row. And then there's two more pins that connect from, from the NES controller, and that's power and ground. And I'll show you it here right now. All right, so here's the NES controller. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it before. It has this uh, connector right here. Um, I didn't want to... I didn't want to cut this wire and put it into the uh, basis three. So what I did was I went on eBay and I found some replacement parts for the NES control deck and I got the female part for the controller and it came with this little connector here and then I just jammed some uh, male to male wires in this connector here for each. Now it does come with a purple and a, and a, and a sorry, you can't see purple and a blue wire. I just cut those off because those I think were used for different controllers like I don't know if you remember the gyro might or maybe even the light gun but for this controller here uh, we're not using the blue and the purple I just cut it off so we just have the red orange yellow the black and white for the power and so now I can just take and plug in my NES controller in here and I don't have to cut this wire at all and uh, now it's connected into my uh, basis 3 and uh, let me show you operating Pong using the uh, Nintendo controller Okay, so I got the Basis 3 programmed up. Got the Nintendo controller right here. So I'm gonna show you, I'm actually playing the game using the uh, Nintendo controller, just the up and down buttons. Same exact game, just instead of using the buttons on the Basis 3, I'm using uh, the Nintendo controller to control the paddle. Oh, I just skipped right over a new game. But there you have it, that's how you use a uh, Nintendo controller on the, the basis three at least for pong thanks for watching bye